Hi guys. Well, I have a story to tell. As those of you who've come back, I've been on a water fast and it was going really well until yesterday night. Okay. After yesterday night, some really bad stuff started happening. And so I decided maybe this isn't the way for me to go. Hey, Desert Rose Tori. Yay. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Um, so the water fast is no more. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we do uh, need to do that draw for the winner. I will maybe get back on later and, and announce the name of the winner. What do you guys think? What do you think, Desert Rose Tori? Made it today, yes, you did. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, my hair's doing weird things today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of hard to get into it. Um, last night, um, started tasting some funny things in my mouth and um, when I went to brush my teeth my it was actually my my gums were bleeding I thought oh I'm dehydrated so I went and I started hydrating myself and I prepared a bone broth and um, tried to see if that was what was wrong and uh, hydrated really well before I went to bed and then um, I thought it was okay this morning, but um, at work today, um, well, actually before work, um, I started getting lightheaded. Hey, Louise, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, my whole system was like flushing. So it was, it was not pleasant. It was really, really painful, but then it was okay. I was like, all right, so maybe this is just, you know, day four really hard kind of things going on with the fast. And I continued to hydrate with uh, potassium salts and magnesium salts. I took my vitamins. Hey, Sin City Soap, how are you doing? <laughs> I thought I'd do something fun because telling the story of what happened, why I'm not doing the water fast anymore. And I don't think I'll do those for more than a day or two if I decide to continue them. It felt really good the first two days. It didn't feel bad the third day, but then I started having problems in the evening. And uh, <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> so it's it's pretty, pretty evident that I can't do it. I can't do a prolonged fast like that. So I'm gonna go back to the one meal a day and right now is my window for you know having a treat. I already feel better. I had some broth earlier and um, some crackers. And I'm gonna stick to, I'm gonna get into this universal yum box because I've been looking at it for a month and I haven't opened it yet. And I'm gonna taste the things, just tiny taste because you know you have to, I don't wanna make myself sick and I'm not gonna eat anything sweet because that'll just set off the inflammation again. But I told myself that I wouldn't continue this um, fast if it made me feel unhealthy because the whole point of it was to, to reduce the inflammation. And that has happened, but you can't ignore things like your gums bleeding and you know dizziness and you know obvious systemic issues. So if you've ever done a prolonged fast, and this starts happening to you, I would suggest, you know, go see your doctor like I did, but I would suggest, hey, lovely hope, welcome, welcome, that you you come off it right away because, you know, you have to listen to your body. And uh, my body was telling me it was all good for a couple of days there. And I've done, you know, 24 and 48 hour fasts in the past. I've even done dry fasts and that hadn't affected me like this did. I mean, I can still feel... Um, yeah, it, it, it's not painful. It's just, they just started bleeding. And you know, when you're, um, dehydrated, you, your nose can bleed. Well, your gums can bleed too. So I, it, it's not, it's more than just that though. So I just, I just don't think it's a good idea for me. So if you're hoping to see a longer fast, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but I guess what I wanted to say is if, 
Um, I just didn't want you guys to worry about me if I seem to be losing weight because it is important for me to change my diet in order for me to get more healthy. All right, so I'm opening this up. We are going to break this fast with goodies from the birthplace of Van Gogh. Hey, Sandy Kay, welcome, welcome. So I am breaking my fast because it is not working for me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I was able to go to work today. I went for a nice long walk. Um, it wasn't really serious, but it was just a little scary. I'm going to do it. All right. I thought this was going to be somewhere in Western, um, Southern Europe. It is actually, I didn't know Van Gogh was born in the Netherlands. How could I have not known that? I thought he was Spanish for some reason. That's cool. All right, so there's a game on the side. I'm gonna do with the kids. Hopefully I'm getting the whole thing. There we go. You can see a few of the things that are in there. And then it talks about some of the major cities and what they're famous for. Cheese and crackers. Oh no, cheese and waffles. Stroop waffles. Oh, I like those, but I won't be I won't be tasting those. But I've already had them before. Um, Canada has a European uh, goodie section and all these grocery stores, <laughs> so I may have tried a few of these things already. Okay, so it says, "Oops, we told you there's a lot of licorice in this month's box, but we didn't tell you the right one." So I'm not sure what this means. We'll find out when we when we get in there. I know that when I went to Iceland. Everything was licorice, like <laughs> licorice and fish for snacks. <laughs> Those little fish crackers everywhere. It was so gross. I'm sorry. I, I, it probably wasn't gross. I didn't actually try it. <laughs> hey, Lenora, welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, we do have our numbers. I just haven't done the little sh sh thing on here, and uh, I will make that announcement in a separate video. In fact, if I can set it up, hopefully you'll be able to see the little spinny and it'll pick the number up on online. On here. So you can see that. All right, so this is some kind of licorice thing. We actually put the wrong on the wrong booklet. On page nine of your booklet, you see a product called Double Deckers. You won't see the product in your box. Instead, you'll see licorice called Zacht Wagons. Soft wagons are made up of three different soft drop candies, toffee flavored trucks, salt tank trucks, and a luxury licorice cement trucks. It's an authentic taste truck for the daring and for those who love to Dutch draw. Hey, Desert Rose. Oh, Deep Pretty. I thought I saw a new one. Welcome, welcome. This is awesome. Um, so yeah, this is me breaking my fast with a little treat after having some, some um, healthy healthy things, <laughs> so I'm gonna have little tastes of not so healthy things, just so I can feel better. <laughs> and I've been wanting to open this up forever and I just cracked the seal, so I had no idea even what was in here. Next month's Yum Box is actually gonna have like lots of Christmas treats from around the world, so that should be really fun. Um, <laughs> thank you, give me some thumbs up if you like it. So far, oh, I've got lots of thumbs up. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the Netherlands, welcome to the Netherlands. Let the Yum Box adventure begin. Okay, so the first thing they have here, okay, so this is a Dutch guidebook, they call it. It's kind of fun. Let me give you a little bit of your Dutch guidebook. Bundle up, it's cold in November in the Netherlands. Spreek, Spreek, this is Spreek, Netherlands. <laughs> the word Helsink doesn't have a direct translation in English because it's a uniquely Dutch word. Roughly defined in English as cozy, enjoyable, pleasant, and entertaining. It's one of the most common phrases in the Netherlands used to describe anything from a person to a movie to a bonfire. But don't use it to describe tense Thanksgiving dinners with the in-laws. Hmm. Okay, so 
<laughs> says thank the Dutch for Thanksgiving. Now this I didn't know. Did you guys know that the, the Dutch helped uh, instill Thanksgiving? Before coming to America, the pilgrims first landed in the town of Leiden in the Netherlands and stayed there for 11 years. According to some historians, that very first Thanksgiving in the New World was inspired by Drie October, the Netherlands annual feast commemorating the Dutch victory over Spain in October of 1574. Well, we have immigrants from everywhere, so could be, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> All right, so the Dutch guide, guidebook says Leiden. So it talks about some of the towns, which is pretty cool. And here's some pictures of those towns. Those big circles are pictures of the towns. Pretty interesting. You recognize the um, the windmills. That's pretty cool. All right. So true or false? Another name for the Netherlands is Holland. Okay. Tell me. True or false? Another name for the Netherlands is Holland. Oh, 520 in the morning? Boy, you're up early, deep pretty. So do you know if the Netherlands is Holland too? True? Let's see. Where's the thing? I think it's at the back. No, false. <laughs> oh my gosh. Holland is the name of a region in the Netherlands and refers to only two of the country's 12 provinces. Nord Holland, North Highland. And Zuid Holland, South Holland, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and Den Haag are all located there. So many people use the word Holland when referencing the entire country, but they're wrong. Oh my gosh! Bye, deep, pretty. <laughs> okay, the Dutch are known for being the what people in the world? The tallest, the shortest, the most active, or the most intelligent? What do you guys think? Anybody have a anybody have a guess? What are the Dutch famous for? Being the tallest, the shortest, the most active, or the most intelligent? Anybody want to take a guess? I don't know. I don't have a clue. I'm thinking tallest. What do you guys think? Active? Okay, let's. You're no. I was right. It's tallest. I thought you were right, Tori. <laughs> Enjoy your tea time. We're going to be having a little tea too. We're going to have a little snackies from Holland as when we get there, when we get to the treats. Ah, I just lost my, I need a bigger table. Okay. It's a big box. Maybe I'll put the box over here. Okay. Number three, there are nine questions. There are eight questions. No, there's nine. The city of Amsterdam is built on A, boats, B, wooden poles, C, sand, or D, ancient ruins. My guess is ancient ruins. What do you guys think? Because I don't have a clue. Don't, don't take my word for it. Is the city of Amsterdam, anybody ever been there? The city of Amsterdam is built on A, boats, B, wooden poles, sand, you think Renee? Welcome Renee, I'm so glad you're here. Ancient ruins, we got two for ancient ruins, one for sand, uh, so boats, wooden poles, sand, or ancient ruins. Anybody else wanna take a guess? Oh my gosh, it's wooden poles. <laughs> the city is built on wooden poles, we're all wrong. <laughs> and I'm gonna read this, because that doesn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, we think of the three little pigs, right? <laughs> the, the little pig that built his house out of wood fell down, but Amsterdam's been there for how long? Oh my gosh. Okay, so you gotta hear this. All right. Amsterdam soil is made up of thick, wet clay. So all of the city's buildings are constructed atop of 36 foot wooden poles protruding from the ground. The impressive royal palace is the center of the city, is supported by a whopping 13,659 of these solid wooden poles. Wait, does that make Amsterdam a giant tree house? <laughs> We're going with yes. <laughs> this is really, really interesting things that I had no idea about. Can you believe it? I know, right, Renee? Okay, number four. 
There are many more what in the Netherlands than there are people. Okay. Windmills, pancake restaurants, bridges, or bicycles. Okay. We think they're they're famous for windmills, right? I don't think there are that many pancake restaurants. We probably have more pancake rest restaurants in North America than, a than Amsterdam, than in the Netherlands. Although, have you guys tried those Abel Skeevers? Those are really good. <laughs> bikes, okay, we got one, one vote for bikes, two votes for bikes. Mm. With all those polls, I'm gonna win. Oh, we got a windmill too, Yo-Yo Biggs. Welcome, Yo-Yo Biggs, I'm so glad you're here. I'm gonna go with windmills. So we got two windmills, two bikes, and a, br uh, no, I was gonna say bridges, not not windmills. So we got, still, we've got two bikes, a windmill, and a hello. Oh, <laughs> I <said> windmill. <laughs> okay, what was I gonna choose? Not pancake. Oh, I don't know. Oh, because there's all of those, um, the, the whole city is like, oh, that's, it's not Amsterdam that we're talking about though. Mm, I'm gonna say windmills too. Hey, Patrick, we're learning about the Netherlands right now. And did you know that the Netherlands is another name for Holland? And the Dutch people are known for being the tallest people in the world. The city of Amsterdam is built on wooden poles. And we need to decide if there are more blank in the Netherlands than there are people. And the, the options are windmills, pancake restaurants, bridges, and bicycles. Right now, the, um, the highest uh, number of votes is for bridges, not bridges, um, bicycles. We'll see. It's bicycles, you guys are right. <laughs> so does Tori and... Who's the other one? Is it Renee? Renee. Tori, Tori and Renee, you are right. Woo woo! <laughs> okay, number five. You were in Amsterdam in the 80s. Oh, you're gonna probably know all the answers then, because they've already found a whole bunch of things that we we don't know. <laughs> the answer to what to I haven't gotten the one. Oh no, I did. I get one, I got one right. I got tallest, I think. All right, when to, what two items do Dutch children hang on trees after they pass their school exams? Is it backpacks, wooden shoes, Dutch flags, or orange socks? What do you think? What two items do Dutch children Oh no, is it choppy? It looks good right now. Darn it, for me. You're thinking socks, Tori? I'm thinking socks too, or wooden shoes. You know, I have a pair of wooden shoes from Amsterdam. My husband went there when he was in the military, said it was awesome. <laughs> All right, too bad he's not hearing me the answers, right? Shoes? I don't know. Okay, it's two for shoes and socks, two for socks. Okay. <laughs> I was supposed to pick two of them and we got none of them. <laughs> it's A and C, backpacks and Dutch flags. <laughs> Toward the end of the school year in the Netherlands, you'll suddenly notice giant Dutch flags backpacks, and sometimes school books dangling outside of homes. It's a good thing this symbolizes that a student has passed his or her final exams. Before cell phones or social media existed, this was the way to see which of your friends passed and which ones were headed to summer school. <laughs> this is so much fun. Holy cow. We're going to do the whole thing, guys, because this is just too fun. All right, number six. There is a police force in the Netherlands that uses trained blank to find criminals. Hey, Brittany, welcome. We are learning about the Netherlands. 
And I am breaking my fast because weird things were happening. You'll have to watch earlier because I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's just freaky. <laughs> and I told you guys that if it didn't make me feel healthy, I was done. Orange socks, I know, orange socks and backpacks are hanging outside people's houses if the kids pass their exams. That's so funny. Okay, there's a police force in the Netherlands that uses trained what to find criminals. Pigeons. No, dogs isn't even one of them, Sandy. <laughs> Can you believe it? I thought for sure, right? Pigeons, wasps, rats, and cats. The way this thing is going is going to be tra trained bees. It's going to be trained wasps. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. You don't think you can train insects. Anybody ever trained an insect? I've got bees, and I can't tell them to stay, and they fly. <laughs> it's like... Hey, lovely hope. Good night, honey. All right. So does anybody want to guess? Pigeons, wasps, rats, or cats to find trained criminals. Oh, it's Wendy where you are, Brittany. Cats. Okay. So pigeons, wasps, rats, or cats. I think I like pigeons too. Well, maybe pigeons. Cats aren't, I don't know how trainable cats are. I haven't had a cat in so long, I just don't know. Pigeons, trained pigeons. Pigeons are pretty smart. Maybe, let's see. We got a couple of votes for, for pigeons. It's rats. <laughs> rats. The police force in the Rotterdam, Rotterdam, Rotterdam region of the Netherlands has been training an elite group of sewer rats since 2013. <laughs> the rats incredible sense of smell allows them to locate drugs, gunpowder and explosives with 95% accuracy. And you know that that makes total sense. Now you think of it, right? They, they totally can be trained. We think of all of the, um, well, I'm psychology trained. So when I think of all of the, um, all of the Skinner boxes and stuff. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> so in just two seconds and a post. Oh, okay. Okay, let me read it again. The rat's incredible sense of smell allows them to locate drugs, gunpowder, and explosives with 95% accuracy, and they can do it in just two seconds as opposed to the two hours it would take for lab technicians to do the same. Rodents must have a very short lifespan, so they must be training. No kidding, right? <laughs> I don't know. I have friends who've had rats for, 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 for pets. But I personally, I, I, don't, I don't like rodents very much, unless they're teeny tiny Russian hamsters. I actually bred those for a while because it was just... Like right after my dad died, I saw these, um, this, it was the first thing that made me smile. And I was in a pet store and they had these little tiny wheels and they were like a little saucer. And these tiny little hamsters were running around and around and around and around and around and around. And I just started laughing because they were just so cute. And I bought these little guys and, um, and they bred and their babies were like little, 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 just small as my pinky. And they were like rabbits. They would breed all the time. So I sold them to the pet stores until my, my pair um, were done with that. And then we just had them for, for pets. It was, uh, they were the cutest little things. And they were just like that big, fully grown. They were like little tiny, what are they, cotton balls, <laughs> full grown. <laughs> they were just so cute. I always thought bulls might be cute, but I guess they're, they they're blind so maybe they're a little scary because they have really pointy noses but i've never actually seen one up close but just tiny things i think are cute when they're mammals so yeah they must have a very short lifespan okay the dutch top their morning toast with one a hot sauce b chocolate sprinkles c green olives or d applesauce they're anything like the Icelanders, it's going to be something savvy like green olives. No, 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 no. It's the chocolate sprinkles because I've seen them. Yes, yes, you've seen them too. 
Yeah, it's not mine either. I've only got like two right, Patrick, so don't feel bad. Are we right? Yes, we were right. We all got it. Okay. Bonus question. Very last one. In 2012, a hundred and seventy-six thousand dollar bridge was constructed in the central Netherlands for what purpose? Hint. Since its construction, it has only been used five times. Okay, is it to decorate a portion of the sky for Christmas? Hey, Vash, welcome, welcome. To make a, a section of the canal wheelchair accessible, to build a marathon route that would not obstruct traffic patterns, or to help squirrels cross a busy sideway, busy highway. So why'd they build this big old bridge? I'm thinking since it wasn't used very often, it would not be the wheelchair accessibility. I don't know if it would be the Christmas thing. And now uh, that would be too frivolous, wouldn't it? To build a marathon route? Maybe that's it. I'm going to guess. You think squirrel crossing, Tori? <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I'm thinking a marathon route. What do you guys think? Squirrel crossing? What is it going to be? You're probably going to be right, Tori. To help squirrels cross a busy highway. You were right. <laughs> no way. Yep. <laughs> this bridge is for the squirrels. The bridge was constructed over a busy highway between Hag's Boss Forest and the Osterheek Park so the squirrels could cross safely. They must prefer other routes because the six-figure bridge was used by three squirrels in 2014 and two in 2015, and that's it. <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, so hopefully that's all for the, the trivia. Let's get into the goodies. Okay, the first one is called Chalk Stroop Waffles. Now, I know these are going to be good, but I've never had chocolate ones. So I might have to have a little tiny to of it. So I know I like those. That. Oh, there it is. Found it. Chalk Stroop Waffle. You guys had Stroop Waffles before? Anybody else had these? The ones I usually buy are like honey soaked. It, this is a, a goodie box from the Netherlands. And so I'm breaking my fast with tiny taste. Since I can't really eat a lot since it's been four days and I don't want to make myself sick. So this is chocolate stroop waffle. And I think this will be the only sweet thing I try. What do you think? Show you what it looks like. I'm not going to eat the whole thing. Oh, oh, oh. You're talking about Besh. Besh, Besh, Besh. Besh is saying that he's gone to your site and looked at it, Patrick. Um, so if you want to have a look at his site, he's got you. All right. So he looked at your site and he likes it. Right, Bash? Okay. Tiny, tiny taste. So it's got caramel or honey. They're, they're all kind of different. But I've never had one with chocolate. And it's good. Not surprised. Tastes kind of like a Twix bar. Exactly like a Twix bar. Yum. That was good. Maybe not good for me, but it was tasty. Hopefully I'm not going to undo everything I've done. Okay, so this troop waffle and the Netherlands are practically synonymous. The famous thin waffle sandwich was first made in the 1840s by Dutch baker Gerard Kompluen, who wanted to efficiently use leftover breadcrumbs by binding them with caramel. Today's Stroop waffles are one of the culinary highlights of a trip to the Netherlands. But chances are, if you've flown with United Airlines in the past two years, you've already tried the traditional treat. We couldn't give you the same thing. This version improves the classic waffle in a major way, a thick coating of silky milk chocolate. Mr. Kampusen would be so proud. Um, Swedish chocolate's my favorite of all the chocolates. This was very, very good. This is very, very good. Um, I would say perfectly comparable. Autodrop Bosch 
Electrode Cadillacs. So this is the licorice that they were talking about. Bye, Patrick. So candy shaped like cars, it's a Dutch thing. These unique gummies are made from Auto made by Autodrop, a famous Dutch confectionery that's been making transportation related sweets since 1695. The first product was a black licorice car tow. While their lineup of cars, trucks, tractors, steering wheels, parking irons, and angry drivers might seem like a strange theme, the quirky candies race off store shelves in the Netherlands. These red catalogs are Autodrop's bestseller, and if you're someone who picks out the reds from a bag of candy, you already know why they're hit. <laughs> Filled with strawberry, cherry, and black currant flavors. Ooh. I'm not gonna try this, guys, but I will show you what they look like. That chocolate's doing funny things to me. But I will, oh, I'll have to show you my favorite one. That's one of my favorite chocolates. I really need to stay away from the, here's what they look like. And here's the different flavors. I'll open it up so you can see, and my kids can eat these. Five, yeah, I already said five. Okay, so I'll show you this. There's not very much in here. It's just a tiny little, little bit. So there's one. I'm thinking, I don't know which one that one is. Let's see if we can find each of the colors so you can, can, can compare them. So there's this one and this one. They're all shades of red. See if there's a darker one in here. Oh, there is. So these are the three little cars. These might make neat uh, soap in beds. Poke these in my silicone. What do you guys think? Should I make a racing car soap? <laughs> they smell really good. They probably taste really good too. But yeah, they're definitely berry. They're wine gums. It says on the front here. And if you like wine gums, probably like these. Sorry. Okay, the next item. Let's see. Wouldn't it be good to get a mold out of those? I think I think that's what I, I don't think I'd give them to my kids at all because I can't eat sugar anyway and they don't need more. Um, I'm going to make a mold out of these. Thank you, Renee. Good minds, um, like minds think alike. Next one. This is one I can actually try a little piece of. Chow Pombar, potato crisps with paprika. So this is the big bag right here. Put it up. You can see. Crispy edible teddy bears. Do we even need to give you any more reasons to eat these? Uh, since they're one of the best-selling snacks in the Netherlands, the Dutch sure don't need a reason. With a light seasoning of paprika, these bears are just mild enough for children who are the main consumers of these crisps in the Netherlands. While Dutch parents might say they're buying chio pombar for the kids, many admit to devouring these bears before their children even get a chance. Honestly, we don't blame them. With a soft crunch and addictive flavor, these adorable yums are hard to resist. Okay. Let's see, paprika. Looks like there's some, no, it's a potato. And they're little, I hope they're not all broken. Another soap making idea, <laughs> they're little bears that are cute. I've done um, cookies, I don't know why. Could, no, they're not that cute, but they're cute. They're not cute enough to do a mold with. Mm. Oh my gosh, this tastes really good. I could eat these. I could eat these. Hey, Nellie, welcome, welcome. I wish I could let you guys all have a taste. Wouldn't that be more fun? I mean, there's only like four of us here. <laughs> okay, very cute. I'll show you what they look like again. I might need just one more. See his little face? Mm. Yeah, those are good. Those are yummy. Oh, they're really yummy. Okay, we'll put them ones that we tried to see what they are ish. There, and I can see it. And the cars that are going to become bath bomb embeds or something fun like that. Because once you put, you know, something into that silicone, it just kind of 
no, it takes on it, it, a horrible reaction goes on. You just don't know. <laughs> no matter how yummy it was, don't, <laughs> don't eat it. Okay, Roca Gouda mini cheese crisps. Here's the picture. I don't know why it's so dark in here, guys. I will really apologize. It's just an overcast day, no matter how much light, like this is light here. And usually there's light behind me, which I don't have. Um, so Roca. Here they are. Roca Gouda mini cheese crispies, puff pastry biscuits with Gouda. With this snack, you're getting a bite of one of the most important foods in the Netherlands, Gouda. Oh, I like Gouda. Gouda's good. This famous cheese, named after the Dutch city of Gouda, accounts for more than 50% of the country's cheese production. Since 1395, the cheese has been traded in its namesake city in a very particular way. Fresh cheese wheels are delivered by horse and cart, then neatly stacked by farmers in front of Gouda City Hall. They're then sold using the hunt clap method in which farmers and traders clap hands to confirm the sale. Pretty cool. The longer the cheese has been aged, the more competitive the bidding. These biscuits bring the nutty Gouda flavor to life as they're made with a premium Gouda that's aged for over 12 months. If you were using the hunch clap method, these yams would certainly get a standing ovation. Well, let's see. We have the cheese crackers. So those are totally keto, which helps keep me from eating things that I shouldn't. Mm, they smell really good. What do they look like? Mm. They're a lot like those cheese crackers. Like, it almost tastes like Parmesan. Like it's, yeah, it's yummy. It's a really salty Gouda. Mmm, that's yummy. A little bit greasy, but yummy. Kind of like uh, has a texture of flaky croissant. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Roca cheddar and raspberry cheese crisps. Well, this is perfect for breaking my fast. There's not a whole lot of candy here, which is good. Raspberries in a cheese cracker. Clearly, these aren't your ordinary crackers. In fact, they're a decade-long project to produce the most sophisticated cheese cracker. Yeah, most, most of them are a little bit. <sighs> the most sophisticated cheese cracker in the country. The beginnings of the company's founder in Rutergis opened a small factory in the city of Delft and began folding 90-layer cheese pastries. He then sliced the pastries into strips and baked them into a new type of biscuit, which he called the cheese crispy. His company name, Roca, is a combination of the name Ro. Did we just eat that? Just, that's why we, we just ate that. Yeah, it was good. But it didn't have any raspberry in it. There's Oh, maybe there's another one. There's another one. Okay, these are just, just the same brand, I guess, but a different, different thing with raspberries. Okay, okay. These just cheese crispies were a success, and today Roca is nationally recognized for their delicate biscuits, featuring only the highest quality Dutch ingredients. These crispies combine a sharp cheddar cheese with the sweet tartness of raspberry for a surprisingly delightful flavor combination. Who knew crackers could be so creative? Let's see. I know. Let's go together, Renee. We'll go. <laughs> oh, we've got to leave. I thought you meant we can go to go to the Netherlands together. <laughs> Enjoy the parade. Bye, Renee. Okay, let's get into these crackers. Hey. They look really cute. They're about four times the size of the other ones. And they've got a similar look, but you can see all the layers. Let's see if I can hold the light so you can see. Like I can see through it on my side. I don't know if you can see the layers, but there are like, there we go. Can you see all the layers now? So there's over like 90 layers, it said, right? 80 layers. Okay, let's see what they're like. Whoa, there's a layer. Mmm. 
It's real raspberry. It's like a, mm. oh my gosh. These are good. I would buy these here if they showed up for sure. That's, that's really neat. And there's just a couple of little pieces of raspberry. So the first bite I ate and just had the cheese and it's a nice sharp cheddar, which is my favorite. And then in the second bite or later in the chewing, I came across a raspberry. And the raspberry isn't sweet, it just tastes like raspberry. So that's why I'm guessing they're like a freeze dried raspberry and not a jam. Mmm. I'm gonna put those away. Special occasion. But you know, it's the holidays. There's lots of special occasions. <laughs> that's even can you see if it's keto friendly ish. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> not surprised, not really. Okay, Drost Orange Pastilles. I'm sure everybody's tried these and the orange ones are the best, I think. What do you guys think? Have you tried these before? Everybody has these, right? We had them in Idaho. You guys ever tried these chocolates? They're awesome. Anybody never tried these? I'm losing everybody. Okay, we just got a few more items left. Uh, the next one is Jan Hegel. Say hello to the ugliest cookie ever. Hey, Jubilina, welcome, welcome. We're doing a um, Universal Yum Box, and I'm breaking my fast. Well, I've already had some healthy things to settle my stomach. And now I'm just having a little tiny taste of something fun because I haven't eaten in four days. And you know, I've got an hour to do that and enjoy it. And so I'm gonna do it with you guys tonight. <laughs> so, okay, so say hello to the ugliest cookie ever. Really in Dutch, John Hegel is what it is. This is it, it's a big box. In Dutch, John Hegel means ragtag, which describes the cookie's crumbly texture and lumpy layer of toppings. The looks can be deceiving. Oops, you can't see it, I'm sorry. This delicious Dutch cookie is made with cinnamon, peanuts, and pearl sugar. Pearl sugar is hard to find. That's what they use for um, oh, those yummy, yummy waffles. The Belgian wash bowls that are, you, you do not put sugar on, you just put fruit on them. Have you guys ever had them? They're super good. Uh, liege waffles. With the recipes for the cookie being passed down through generations, it just goes to show that the best yams prioritize appetite over appearance. So let's see, they kind of look like a granola bar to me. That's not ugly, that's just normal, right? Let's see. We have a Dutch bakery here in Victoria and they are amazing. Oh, you've tried these? Tori, you've tried these before? I should take you guys to the Dutch bakery in Victoria. It's incredible. It's probably one of the most amazing bakeries I've ever been into. It's uh, so they're good, huh? Okay, I'm gonna take a little one because there's this is what they look like. Oh, they smell like cinnamon. Oh yeah, these are like an oatmeal cookie, aren't they? Yeah, definitely comfort food. <laughs> you can see the sugar on top. That's not oatmeal. That's pearl sugar. <laughs> I'm not going to eat anymore. That was yummy. Oh my gosh, that's so good. That's probably as good as a Scottish um, Scottish oat cookies with the chocolate on the back. Those are really, really good. What are they called? I can't think of what they're called, but they're super good. All right, two more things left. One, two, and then we're done. Well, there's nothing about these. Sock wagons. I guess these were the ones that, uh, oh, here they are, the yum bag. So this is a bag of treats. I'm not going to try any of them, but I'll show you what they look like. There's a few of them. And these are the little licorice cars. I'm definitely going to also use these to make, um, oh, they smell really good, though. Oh, yeah, the deep, oops, not that one. So the little cars, isn't that cute? Wouldn't that be neat for an embed on top of a car, of a, of a loaf of soap? 
That's super cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch for those to come out. And there's different types too. There's a truck. The detail is really good. Oh, I like this truck. And they smell like butterscotch is what they smell like. So it's not being eaten. It's going to be eaten. We just took it in here. That will be fun. Okay. For my soapy kitchen. All right. So the first one is a Dutch Best Praline. And that's this little green one. Maybe I didn't get any of those. This. Oh, so it's a chocolate, probably. No, it's hard. And the Netherlands, the word praline is used to describe any chocolate with filling inside. So basically all of them. <laughs> the Dutch are pros at making chocolate filled or not as they control the chocolate trade for over 200 years. In the 1700s, nearly 200 years after the Spanish first brought chocolate to Europe, Amsterdam became the largest port for arriving for trading chocolate. Thanks to the Dutch East India Company. During this time, the Dutch inherited, invented the Dutch cocoa processing method, which gives chocolate a milder taste, as well as hundreds of delicious chocolate recipes. You're going to try the best of them with these Dutch best pralines filled with hazelnut cream, cereal crispies, and cappuccino cream. Oh, my son will like these. He can have those. He likes some um, the hedgehogs. Hey, Lavender Sunday chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just going through a Netherlands Universal Yum Box, and these are the things that I've tasted. And I've already overdone it because I can feel like my, <laughs> my system buzzing a little bit. <laughs> um, Holland Half Cheese. Let's show you what those look like. Okay. Are you addicted to coffee? Not to worry, you're not alone. Back in 1792, another coffee addict, the Baron Hendrik Hopp, lived above a candy store in the Hog. Hendrik was advised by his doctor that to kick the coffee habit, but of course he didn't listen. Instead, he asked his downstairs neighbor to create a candy that would satisfy his coffee craving. After some experimentation, the confectioner presented Hend Hendrik with a sweet made from coffee caramel, cream, and butter, calling it the Hapji. Hendrik eagerly shared the treat with his guests, and it became one of the most popular sweets in the Netherlands back in the 18th century, and still are one of the most iconic today. One of the reasons is withstood the test of time. This recipe includes caffeine. Coffee addicts rejoice. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> okay, next one. Milk chewies. Milk chewy. I I get a um, Chinese one called um what are they called? Uh oh, I'll think of it. But it looks just like this, but like three times bigger. Milk. It's a Chinese treat. Okay, this is called milk chewies. The Dutch are famous for their dairy, and there's one thing thanks to that mud. Over 400 years ago, most of the Netherlands was covered in water and swampy marshland. But in the 17th century, locals began a massive project to rebuild their country, constructing thousands of canals and water pumping treadmills to drain the land. This new land was perfect for growing rich grasses, and soon thousands of cows were happily grazing. Suddenly, the Dutch had a whole lot of milk on their hands. The excess of milk was used to make many of the creamy foods the country is known for today. Milk, cheese, yogurt, pudding, and of course, this creamy and chewy milk candy. Mmm. Yeah, I bet it's good. Okay, last one, I think. I think it's the last one. It's called Napoleon Zwart Wit. Okay, the Napoleon's wort wheat, hard black licorice with a salty filling. You can get a lot of salty licorice in the grocery stores. <laughs> I think it's in the Netherlands. <laughs> uh, here in Victoria, anyway. Do you consider yourself a fan of salty snacks? It's time to put that to the test. This may look like regular candy, but it's salt milk. A famous salty licorice beloved through the Netherlands. Yes, salty licorice. It tastes as interesting as it sounds, if not more. But the Dutch love the particular pe peculiar pairing. This variety, the Napoleon's Wartwick, is one of the country's most popular 
Salamit candies. The licorice, the, oh, the saltier, the better. To try it, we suggest sucking on the sweet shell until you're fully prepared for the pungent burst of salt in the center. Oh my, good idea. Oh yeah, good ideas for Christmas. <laughs> okay, we suggest, okay. Okay, we suggest that if you love it, you should consider to move to the Netherlands. We will probably ever see these here. They have lots of like gummies like this one here that are salty. Like there's like, I bet I could pick up at the grocery store here probably at least 10 different types of liquors. And when I was in, like I said, Iceland, uh, I got this thing of different kinds of licorice and they had caramel licorice. I didn't get any of the salty because I knew I didn't like it. Yeah, this is going to make some nice fun stocking stuffers for my kids, especially this one. <laughs> it's, just, it's just such smooth chocolate. It's delicious. Um, so yeah, that is the Universal Yum Box. I have officially in front of everyone uh, stopped my fast um, for health reasons. I began it for health reasons and when the health reasons seem to be not good it didn't make me feel good and i was bleeding in my gums which is weird never had that happen with any diet i've ever done ever has anybody ever had bleeding gums that was scary and not something i think i want to uh experience again i have one more quick thing to do with you guys that is so related so um yeah a lot of world imports has a lot of the licorices. Okay, this one, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tear it. I don't know what's in it. This is one of the things from my sister's package. So we're gonna open it up and see what's inside. Oh, it's mold. It's so, so surprised. What did I get finally? Oh, it's um, a girl. Cute little girl. I don't remember ordering this one. Maybe I clicked the wrong button. Yours was from Low Vitamin C. Well, I took all my vitamins. I don't know what went wrong. I'll have to do more. Um, but I, I don't think I'll, I'll try a long fast like that again. I, I didn't get hungry or anything, but yeah, weird thing that things were happening on my body in my body. And, oh, it's, it is, oh, it is Elsa. This is totally, okay, thank you. Cause I've got Olaf right here. That makes total sense. I wanted to do a frozen um, um, themed soap. And this will be different than anybody else's. So they'll be full size characters, maybe on the front of my bars. And if I can push them in a little bit, so they're kind of flush, that's, that's what I want to do. I don't want them sticking on the outside. I want them kind of like either smoothed around the edges, like um, like some of my other um, soap making friends do to make it all look, you know, like one piece. And because it's like thick, it'll last for a while. Let's see. We will see. You're right. It's Elsa and Anna. I think it's Anna and Elsa because there's a little braid on this one. Yeah, Anna, Elsa, and Ola. <laughs> All right, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And I got one more right here, which is some kind of rubber ducky, I'm sure. Because it just feels like rubber duckies. Oh, it's rainbow rubber duckies, unicorn rainbow rubber duckies. <laughs> A whole bag of them. So that'll be fun for bath bombs. Oh my gosh. And now that I have the Wildwood press, it makes the easiest bath bombs ever. And if you ever see anybody do bath bombs in the um, in the bathtub with the donut shaped one that floats, the whole thing just kind of rotates. And even if even if these blah, blah, blah. and even if these guys don't float, even if they like swim like that because sometimes they're not balanced right um it'll be on top of the water while the bath bomb goes which is good i'm so excited to try it out i'm so excited to try it out so end of the fast you don't have to hear about that anymore but if i am losing weight don't worry i am trying to get my health under control so i'm not sick um yeah just tried something extreme and it wasn't for me 
You've never tried a bath bomb, Lavender Sandy Chat? They're awesome. Um, go to a craft show and find a soap maker that makes bath bombs or go to Lush and get a, one of their like decadent bombs. They're awesome. Um, you don't have to use the whole thing. Uh, if you want to see bath bombs being used, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are doing that, which is super fun too. Now, before I finish, I want to show you two more things. Um, I just want to remind people that we've got two more days for the free shipping on 12 items from Gentle Soaps. So you can choose any 12 items you want, and it's got free shipping anywhere in North America. Uh, overseas, uh, $20 off your shipping, and I will give that to you after. I will refund that after, if you order before the 5th. Now, the last thing, which is probably what people thought was going to go on today, is another peek at the Lush Fund giveaway. So here's all the goodies that someone's gonna get, and these are from Lush. Shellbrook Farms Handcraft Soap. This is their Sultans of Swing, and I've taken it out of here so many times that I'm wrecking the packaging, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's pretty. Here, I gotta get it out one more time. I tied it up, that's why it's tied again. Isn't that gorgeous? I'll put that in carefully. A couple of gentle soap samples. My oh, Canadian Pride and Lavender Bling. Moringa and black soap from Africa from Skin Passion in Ghana. Gentle soap, so Saifa, uh, Naked Honey Salish Sea. Tomic Balm, Bath and Bodies, uh, Bubba Gun Scented Glycerin Soap. Royalty soaps, emerald and marble. Alanya Bees, sweet pea, which has got a flower in it. Royal Appleberries, peppermint bark, super cute. Gentle soaps again, honey pumpkin gingerbread, smells like Krispy Kreme's gingerbread. Star soaps, pumpkin chai with a little pumpkin and a little star. Aleppo soap from Aleppo, Syria. Yeah, glycerin soap's awesome. And Tammy's stuff is amazing. Uh, Nancy's Garden Soap Co. Black Pepper. And last but not least is Gypsy Bay Creations Flower Child. So there we go. Those are the soaps that will be given away later tonight. I will um try to figure out how to put the draw so you can see it i may have to just do a um announcement type video rather than a live if i can't figure that out but that will be the given away tonight hopefully it'll probably be announced in the morning i'll probably get it on last thing tonight so look for that tomorrow it should be pretty awesome and we'll see you guys all next time do you have any questions go ahead and ask them now and uh and I'll answer your questions in just a couple more minutes. Does anybody have any questions about the draw, about fasting, about universal yums? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's going to be a special at Christmas time if you're interested in getting your own box. Every month it's a different country and a different, you know, kind of trivia. And, and, and you're in the draw. Lavender Sunday chat. You have as many of your comments here in the chat. Uh, or in any of my videos, if you guys want to bulk up on your chances, go to my past videos, you know, make little comments, um, give me thumbs up, and you'll get another draw for each time you do that. So before midnight, actually before about 10 o'clock, all of those will be counted again, and we will pick a winner from that. So I'm going to do one of those random number check things here on the internet, and I'll take a screenshot of it. And uh, yeah, you can you know increase your chances of winning if you want to get royalty soaps and royal appleberry and gentle soaps and everybody that I just mentioned. So many fun things um, in that box. And uh, yeah, all right. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now, and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to leave any comments below, again, that's more um, chances to win. <laughs> okay. Bye for now. Hey, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. My kids have arrived. I'm mm -hmm. done. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Yeah. <laughs> oh, 